the incentives are always in the wrong place. The kind of stories that I want to talk about on the Young Turks and do talk about on the Young Turks get no attention. They don't do well in terms of the number of views. I want to talk about international news. I want to talk about what's happening in Brazil. I want to talk about what's happening in Ecuador. It'll get like maybe 40,000 views at most. You know what gets a lot of views? I don't know. Anna Kasparian destroys this person. Or here's the latest cat fight. Like, I hate it. It's garbage. It's garbage. Because it leads to people not trusting the press, but at the same time, the profits are there. The money is there. And I think you see that play out across the board, whether you're talking about cable news or online media. All right, so I wanted to get into examining this fascinating debate that took place between Anna Kasparian and Ben Shapiro, where they debated and discussed various issues such as related to the economy, the infrastructure bills, both the bipartisan and the human infrastructure and a reconciliation bill, let alone various other issues. But specifically within the context of this exchange, they were focusing in on what's going to be the role of the media henceforth, especially as social media continues to get bigger thereby also highlighting in terms of how long are the days in the past in terms of a sort of Walter Conkright nightly news analysis where both right and left wing individuals agreed upon the news and had an overarching viewpoint in terms of a political understanding on issues. Naturally, with the emergence of social media spaces, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, most individuals encompass a sort of confirmation bias where we're seeking to fulfill our preconceived notions and or biases, such as if we're on the right, we're seeking to reaffirm those biases by only watching the Daily Wire. In similar fashion, if we're on the left, we're only seeking to watch the Young Turks and Anna Kasparian. The only best way to regulate such confirmation bias is one, if specific social media outlets maintain a certain level of credibility, such as honing in and regulating on the facts and not perpetuating lies something that Facebook falls short of doing so. No doubt that's a component that's vital and necessary in terms of any social media space. But the deeper insight that should exist within all individuals, because this is the main component attached to combating against that confirmation bias, is seeking both outlets, both right-wing, Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire, left-wing Anna Kasparian and the Young Turks listening to both perspectives on a same if not similar story and then formulating an individual's own perception around such said story is the actual critical analysis that most individuals should be seeking. But of course as Anna Kasparian went into that's not the sort of media sphere that's sort of been engaged with let alone that's emerged within social media spaces because actual conversations around exemplifying any sort of understanding and nuances and complexities around the economy whether political issues pertain to policy are issues that are pushed to the margins and instead you get these sort of outrage culture perpetuating type videos of such and such destroys educates eviscerates the sort of sjw culture and or era which was much more and still is but was much much more precedent within the realm of sort of the 2016 to even all the way up until 2019 but still is still a large part of the political space within social media no doubt it starts with the individual in terms of combating against confirmation bias and examining both sides to a specific story and thereafter formulating 
your own opinions and or perceptions around a specific story. But no doubt regulations are also important in terms of social media spaces. But it's also crucial and or important that individuals also engage in trying to have a more deeper understanding on the issues at hand. And that's only going to be done if individuals within these spaces, whether it's the YouTubes and the Twitch, are not so much consumed with perpetuating outrage culture, but are more so consumed with pushing forth substantiative analysis tied to policy, whether domestically, whether foreign related, as opposed to focusing much more on the outrage culture, which unfortunately is the pervading culture and or analysis that pervades such spaces, especially YouTube. Nonetheless, here's some of the exchange that took place between Anna Kasperian and Ben Shapiro. With the media, right? I mean, the, the media for the longest time completely ignored the very real frustrations that workers have been feeling in this country. I mean, the Federal Reserve released data indicating that nearly half of Americans can't even afford a $400 emergency. At the same time, you tune into CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, I mean, it doesn't matter, across the board, and they're like, the economy is doing great. Uh, you know, we're seeing uh, record growth, and what they're specifically talking about is the stock market. But the stock market is disconnected from the reality that the majority of workers are experiencing. So I think that that type of stuff leads to uh, people feeling, you know, distrustful toward the press. At the same time, they exist in these filter bubbles and have their preconceived notions. It's hard to challenge that. So there's a lot of different things happening at the same time. I don't blame people for not being so trusting of the media. One other thing that I'll note is that the incentives are always in the wrong place. The kind of stories that I want to talk about on the Young Turks and do talk about on the Young Turks get no attention. They don't do well in terms of the number of views. I want to talk about international news. I want to talk about what's happening in Brazil. I want to talk about what's happening in Ecuador. It'll get like maybe 40,000 views at most. You know what gets a lot of views? I don't know. Anna Kasparian destroys this person. Or here, here's the latest cat fight. Like, I hate it. It's garbage. It's garbage. Because it leads to people not trusting the press, but at the same time, the profits are there. The money is there. And I think you see that play out across the board, whether you're talking about cable news or online media. We go back, Ben, and separate the fact-based from the opinion now, or is it going to be conflated for the foreseeable future? I mean, I think the truth is that that was a relatively modern construct. I mean, if you go back to the foundations of the Republic, the people who were reporting were also doing opinion, and that was true all the way through the beginning of the 20th century. It was really only with Walter Lippmann in the 1920s that you start talking about objective standards in journalism. And there's a difference between an objective standard that you apply to how a story is reported and being an objective reporter, meaning you have no politics at all. And I think, frankly, if you want to reinstall some sort of institutional trust, it would be good for reporters to say, here's who I voted for, and then here are also the facts that I am reporting on, because otherwise it ends up being a gotcha, right? I see how you're reporting that. I see what you're doing. I know right. what you really think about this story. Uh, so that, that's a major issue. I think the other big issue, obviously, I mentioned gatekeepers before. Uh, I'm very wary of the reinstallation of institutional gatekeepers, because if you want to talk about market incentives, the big players have all the incentives to ensure that they are the ones who maintain their access via the gates. Uh, and this is one of my great fears with some sites that we've been very successful with, like Facebook, is that reestablishing the idea that there are quote-unquote trusted news sources and those all coincidentally are legacy media sources yep. <laughs> uh, means that everybody who's not a legacy media source, somebody who started up a company in the last 10 years, right, we opened in our doors in 2015, we're not legacy media. And so we don't have that legacy. So now you're shutting out all the players who are actually entering the market.